In this tutorial, we will create a neural network with TensorFlow and Keras that can recognize handwritten digits between 0 and 9 using the MNIST dataset. We will do everything in Google's Colab, so if you want to follow along and you have never written any TensorFlow code before, you can just go to Google Colab either by searching it or I will make sure to put a link to their website as well. And you can start creating your own neural network with only using a Google account and you won't need to install anything because everything is already pre-installed in this Colab environment. Colab is also free to use as well. So by the end of this video, if you follow along, you will have written your first neural network using TensorFlow and Keras that can recognize handwritten digits and we will build the network, train the network, evaluate the network, then we will save that network so you can export that neural network and use it somewhere else as well. So let's start by importing the necessary libraries, which are TensorFlow, and matplotlib. We will import TensorFlow STF because it's easier to use this way. We will also use matplotlib to visualize the data we have really easily. So by clicking shift and enter, I will just run the code in this cell and I will move to the next cell. Next thing we can do is to actually get the data and split it for training and testing data sets. To get the data, we will go to tf.keras.datasets and in here we have multiple options in terms of already prepared datasets for us such as Cypher 10, Cypher 100, Fashion MNIST and today we will use the MNIST dataset and we will load the data. And once we get the data, we won't be able to use this as the whole data but we will actually need to split it to training and testing datasets, so let's do that. So now we are getting the data and splitting it to training and testing and in training we will have the images that are handwritten and the corresponding labels for those images and for the testing we will have the same thing as well and the reason we have two of those is to first train our neural network on the training images then test it on images that it hadn't seen before. So let's run that and get our data and we get it from Google's storage from TF Keras datasets. Next thing we should do is to scale down these pixel values to a range that is closer to zero so our neural network can process it more easily. And to do that we will say train images divided by 255 and we will set it equal to train images again and this will turn these pixel values from 0 to 255 range to 0 to 1 range, which is much easier for a neural network to understand and work with. And we'll also do the same thing for testing images. And now we have both of them in the same format. So let's actually see what we have as the data and visualize it. Let's print some stats about it. And let's also display the first image in the training set. And that's how it looks. So this is the first image which has a label of 5 and we can also see the shape of our training as well as testing images. So in the training set we have 60,000 images that are 28 by 28 pixels and these are all black and white images by the way. And in the testing images we have 10,000 of those images that are similar to these and they're also 28 by 28 pixels. And if you want to see some couple other ones we can also do that by checking the second index which has the label of 0 or the third index which has the label 4. So let's leave this at the first index and continue. So now that we have some idea about the data we are working with, we downloaded the data, split it for training and testing. Now let's go ahead and actually create the network. So first thing we should do is to define the neural network. For this network, for this model, I will give it the name of my model and we'll create it by using tf.keras.models. There are actually three ways to create models in TensorFlow and we will use the most beginner friendly one which allows you to create models by literally stacking neural network layers on top of each other with the simplest way possible. So once we say that we will create our model with the sequential model, we'll just add the layers sequentially. So from tf.keras.layers, we'll add different kind of layers. First one we will use is actually flatten. 
and the reason we are using a flatten layer is to get these 28 by 28 pixel images and flatten them into a single line of pixels so that we can feed them to our neural network that can get a single line at each time because we are using the most simplest and the most original neural network. On later tutorials we will see that we can actually work with square images as well but even at those models we will still use a flatten layer when we are connecting them with what is called a dense neural network. And for this dense layer, we will use a neural number of 128. Usually there is no perfect number to have, but some best practices. So this number is usually a multiple of 8. So in other networks, you might use 32, 64, 128, 256, and so on. For a basic intuition, smaller your network is, faster your code is going to run. And if you can do it with a smaller network, it will take less memory, it will run faster, and it will have less chance for overfitting. We should also give this layer an activation. And for that, we will use one of the most common activation functions, which is a ReLU. Currently, ReLU activation is one of the most computationally efficient and effective one. So it is widely used. And for the next layer, I will actually go ahead and copy and paste this line, because basically everything will be similar with this la layer as well. But one thing I should change is, is how many neurons I want in my layer. And because this will be my last layer in this network, I will have to use 10 neurons because this number here should match how many classes you have for classification. In this case, we have numbers between 0 to 9. So we have 10 classes. And for activation, because we are doing a multi-class classification, we will use, we will use something called softmax. And this softmax activation function will turn all the values into a probabilistic range that we can interpret. So if this network thinks that when we give that 5, if it thinks that it is 5 by 70%, we will get that number as 0.70 for that given image. These four lines of code are actually all it takes to define this neural network. Next, we will compile the model. And when we compile our model, the network will be actually created. Compile our model, we will give it some default parameters such as an optimizer which is an optimization algorithm for a neural network and atom optimizer is one of the most common ones to use due to its efficiency and performance and we also have to define a loss and because we are using a multi-class classification we will use parse categorical cross entropy which is also highly used in multi-class classifications. And with all of these, such as the optimizer or the loss function, you can experiment with those to see in your case, which function giving you better performance. These are some of the goat functions and optimizations. So usually you can start with these and experiment with others and compare your performance. We will also define some metrics that we want to track. And for that, we will just track accuracy of this model. Next step is to train the network or train the model. So to train the model, we will give it the training images, such as this one, which is the first training image. We'll also give the training labels. And basically what we do is to create this neural network and feed it with those images and the labels and tell the network that, okay, when, when I show you an image like this, I want you to give me a result of five. And when I give you a, an image of zero, I want you to tell me that it's a zero. And we will basically run over all the training images here. We will do this three times in this case. So our model at the end will have seen three times 60,000 images with the matching labels. And then we will see how good it performs with the images that it hadn't seen before with the testing images. So the epochs in here is the number of times our model will see the training data. We don't want this to be too high. Otherwise our model may start to do something what's called overfitting which is where the model tries to memorize some parts of the images, which is not really useful or generalizable. Therefore, we will start with a small number, such as three in this case, and see how it performs. And if you need to, we can always train our model for more epochs to see how the performance improves on both training and testing datasets. So let's now train our model. We are at the first epoch. And by the end of the first epoch, we have the accuracy of 87. At the second time it sees the training data, we will have the accuracy of 96. And by the end of the third run, we'll have 97.77% accuracy on recognizing these handwritten digits. 
So this is pretty good, but this is not the actual performance on the images that it hadn't seen before. So these are already images that it's seen three times in total. So what we want to do is to test it on a data that hadn't seen before. So the evaluate our model on the test data, we will say my model dot evaluate and we'll give it the test images as well as the test tables. So it can take a guess on the test images of what it thinks and it will compare it with the test labels and give us the performance that it achieves. And we actually have the accuracy of 97.52%, which is actually pretty good. And they're also pretty close to each other and this is what we want. So if we had like 70% accuracy or 80% accuracy on the test data set, but we had 97% accuracy on here, it would be a sign of an overfitting and we will have to make some modifications on the network and try it again. And would probably increase the number of epochs we are using. But in this case, these numbers are pretty close and also pretty high for such a simple and small network. So now we have a neural network model that can classify handwritten digits with over 97% accuracy. But if you wanted to use this model somewhere else, we would have to create this model again, as well as training again. Because our model is currently small, this actually won't take much time. But I actually want to show you how you can save this model so you can use this model somewhere else with the same exact performance as well. So to save our model, we'll just say my model.save and we will give it a place for it to save. In this case, I will call it my MNIST model and everything about this model will be saved under this folder in Colab. And we can go check our files, which will have our model and everything about our model will be here, including the variables and model architecture. So if I want to use this model somewhere else, I will just get this folder and I will get the same accuracy from this network. And retrieving the model is actually pretty straightforward as well. So let's recreate the model from the file system as well. And to load the model from the file system, we will say tf.keras.models and load model. And we will give it the file address, which I will just copy and paste from here. Because we are in the same notebook or the same file level. And let's also go ahead and check our model for performance to make sure that it gives us the exact same results. And we get the same exact accuracy on the same exact test set, which is what we were expecting because we are recreating the exact same model from the file system. So now we can get this model and use it somewhere else and we know that we will get the exact same performance. And that's about everything I want to show you about the MNIST model. So in this tutorial we import the libraries, get the model, scale down the images and visualize the data to see how it looks like, what are the dimensions and the shapes of our data. Then we created our neural network with only five layers. We trained the model, evaluated it and saved our model. We also retrieved it and tested it again for reliability as well. So if you think I missed something, leave them in the comments down below. If there's a tutorial you want to see about machine learning, you can also leave them in the comments as well. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you want more tutorials like this, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.